Hi, welcome to another episode of Rick's Unhealthy, Semi-Healthy, Mostly Healthy Kitchen. Today we're going to be doing an old southern favorite. We're going to be doing shrimp and grits. That was a horrible accent. I'm sorry, but we got the shrimp, but we don't have the grits because we're going to use these little weird things. All right, first of all, this is a three-part thing. We've got your shrimps, we've got your cauliflower, which we're going to turn into something resembling grits, and then we got this sort of panish tasso-like, which isn't going to be tasso gravy. The idea is to start with the shrimp. Now, I always keep the tails on because I'm a heathen and I like to eat with my fingers. I did make one of these somewhere. Here we go. It has no tails for you fork eaters. All right, let's set this aside. The first thing you need to do is take some good olive oil, and I mean extra virgin, good stuff, don't skimp. And what you want to do is sprinkle it a little bit, both sides, because nobody likes single-sided seasoned shrimp. Now, as far as seasoning, I like to keep it simple. Just a little bit of pepper, and I apologize, it is seriously windy here today. Ah, this is, screw it. Also gonna use a little salt. This is the problem of cooking outside in Miami. You kind of got to do it from back here and hope the wind blows it exactly where you want. Again, flip this stuff over. Give it another little dab. I'm going to put a little more pepper because it all went into the backyard. It really likes to go. All right, the other thing I like to do, this is optional, by the way, cayenne pepper. You don't want to put a whole lot on it because this stuff can really overpower and shrimp is kind of fine and plus my girlfriend doesn't have the same taste buds I do but I like ah, a little bit on there you know by the way this makes a <laughs> that's gonna make life a little better okay let this sit you can do whatever you want with it but we don't need it quite yet I'm gonna put him back here somewhere the other thing we've got and I'm gonna do sort of two things at once three things I'm starting to boil some water it's taking a long time because I think the wind keeps blowing that out. We're going to boil the cauliflower. Now, normally, I wouldn't do that. Normally, I would take this bucket of, by the way, not albino broccoli. It really is something different. Normally, I would steam that. But for the life of me, I don't know where my steamer is. So we're going to boil it. When you boil it, be sure you drain the living snot out of it because you want it moist later on it's going to look like mashed potatoes but you don't want it so moist that it well you eat it with a straw if you know what i mean so in a little bit i'm going to put this into this we're going to cook it till it's soft how soft is soft you ever make mashed potatoes you know how it gets to that point where it's no longer crispy but it's not sort of self-collapsing that's what you're going to do and we're also once oh this thing is definitely hot and we're going to put the shrimp on the bobby now, the other thing you got to remember about shrimp when you're cooking this is don't overcook it. Nobody likes rubbery shrimp. So what you want to do is cook it maybe three quarters of the way through, pull it off, get it the hell off the heat. It's going to keep cooking and it's going to kind of come just right. And even if it's just a little bit not quite right, you're going to be putting some hot stuff on top of it. Okay, while we are waiting for the cauliflower to get a boiling, I want to tell you what is good to drink with this. And I am by no means, by the way, a wine connoisseur. As you could tell, this one has a screw cap on it. But with shrimp and grits, especially when you make the grits kind of on the light side, I like a nice white. This one's sort of a semi-dry, mostly dry Sauvignon Blanc from, where is it from? Chile. The reason I bought this is I drink the hell out of the red version, the Chilean red. This is the Chilean white. So hopefully it's going to be pretty good. But... I really can't cook with this. I could, but then I'd drink the whole bottle and, well, you know what dinner would be like. So in the meantime, I'm going to go have a beer while I'm doing this, if you don't mind. Ah, where did that go? That was supposed to be more dramatic and flourishy. Salute! If you guys only knew what time it was and the fact that I'm drinking this early in the day, you'd lose all respect for me. Okie dokie, while this is going and that's getting ready, I'm going to light up my other burner, assuming I have propane. I haven't checked it in a while, this could go horribly wrong. Anyway, into this pan, and by the way, you'll notice I don't use, oh, I thought it went out. I don't use Teflon, um, and we have them, I don't like to use them. 
and I don't know if it's true or not, but I don't like the idea of Teflon, this man-made weird stuff scraping off into my pans, into my food. It's just as easy to use these things. Yeah, they may take a little extra scrubbing at the end of the day. And I apologize if you saw the last video, by the way, by the end of it, I was beat red from the heat and me being me. So <laughs> we're on the way for that one. Anyway, I digress. Apparently I should have taken my Adderall today. We're gonna get this pan kind of hot. We're gonna make the gravy in this, but first, before we do that, I wanna crisp up some prosciutto. Now, normally if you were doing Southern low country cooking, you would use something like uh, tasso ham. But I wanna kinda make this vaguely international and plus, I love prosciutto. Oh, and I wanna show you the rest of the ingredients we got while we're doing this. We've got, ow, that was really hot. We got your prosciutto. We've got Havarti cheese. I'm gonna make this cheesy cauliflower and you can use any kind of cheese you want. I, let me do it over here where you can see it. Uh -huh. I like Havarti, it's just really good and creamy. Butter, because you need butter. Lemon, I've never actually used lemon, but whoa, the high burner 7000 really cooks up quickly. I lost my place. I've never used lemon in this and I've also never used this in it. Leftover coffee, it's supposed to help with the gravy and we're gonna give it a shot. We've also got scallions, we've got some cilantro and uh, stock flour. Oh, there's another thing I wanna show you that I'm gonna try. You're supposed to use heavy cream. I got silk because if this is going to be semi-healthy, kind of be sort of semi-healthy, uh, let's try to limit the dairy, even though five pounds of butter is going in this. Okay, I probably seriously overheated the oil, but I want to get the prosciutto in. Ah, oh, I love that sound. Love, love, love that sound. Um, I just want to get it crispy. The prosciutto is actually going to be used for garnish later and well half of it's going into my face while i'm cooking but i'm going to do this i'm going to do this and do this and through the magic of tv in a second it will all be done and you'll be going oh wow that didn't take any time at all okay while we're waiting for this stuff to get ready i want to tell you a really quick story about the last time i was down in charleston south carolina which by the way if you haven't been go the food is just freaking incredible down there but when you get down to the old town area, and it's gorgeous by the way, it's just miles and miles and acres and acres of all these wonderful old houses with the giant verandas facing, I think, east. It's one of the directions to keep it out of the sun. Anyway, you're gonna go to a restaurant or a bar and you're gonna have a few of these. Then you're gonna go walking into the neighborhood. No matter where you go between the bar and elsewhere, there are no public bathrooms. Trust me on this one, I know there are none. And they don't like you peeing in the alleyways because they're very, very you know, Southern people and they don't like you to do that stuff there. Anyway, so when you go down to Charleston and you really should go, make sure you go to the bathroom a lot before you go into the neighborhood. You're welcome. Okay, these are really, 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 really close, but the shrimp are pretty much done. And what I wanted to show you over here, let me hit record so you can actually see what I'm doing. Hi, lizard. We have a thousand lizards over here. You can see these are just on the other side of pink. They are, and they're starting to feel a little rubbery tough. What I want to do for me is basically turn the heat off and I'm just going to let them sit there. Now I could probably, if I was a smart man, Put them up, ah -ha! put them up here. Just kind of let them sit off the heat. Um, as this starts cooling down, I'll just shut the lid and they'll stay warm and kind of finish cooking. Although they're pretty close to maybe being on the wrong side. To kind of, ah, I don't want that one anyway. Not kill me. How close are these? Mmm. I'm guessing maybe 30 seconds a minute away. So I'm gonna take these over here and drain them. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put them back in the pot after it's been drained, drained, drained under very low heat. Just kind of give it a gradual stir. That's before I mix in the other stuff. The reason I'm doing that is because I want all the water to, I don't know, basically boil off. Like I said earlier, I don't want these to be runny. The consistency of grits when you make shrimp and grits is sort of, um, it's stiff. You should be able to eat it with a spoon, but it shouldn't be soup, and it shouldn't be also so hard that you need a knife or a fork. That's kind of what we're going, and I'm probably there already. Hang tight. 
And you'll be pleased to know, for those of you who saw my salsa recipe, I actually used a towel to pick up the pot this time because I burned the snot out of myself last time. And uh, I'll stick a link up to the other video just in case you haven't seen it. Ah! <laughs> I should have learned. I'm just going to turn the heat off on this. I've actually got it drained. I've used the water to, excuse me, the water. I used a fire to help with the water. What you want to do is just give it a rough kind of chop, as you can see there. Uh, it still looks like albino broccoli, but what we want, wow. Good thing this is outside. I'm sure the lizards will love this. What we're going to do is we're going to add a whole bunch of melted butter and we're going to add the cheese in now too you can do this later you can do it now it's all melted together for me so that's what i got <laughs> get in there close enough i'm probably going to need more butter as far as spices go you're going to need definitely some salt um, cauliflower just really requires a lot of salt going to have some pepper in there as well and I like to put in a little thyme. Now, Lord, I put the thyme in there. No, you know, actually I put the thyme in there. I completely forgot. Do not put the thyme in this thing. Now what you do want to do, however, get the cream. And like I say, I've never used this stuff before, but it's made from soy. I drink soy all the time. I gotta try it. That tastes nothing like heavy cream, but we're gonna try it anyway. Um, start small, start very small. Like you say, you don't want this so liquidy that, excuse me, I need to get the hand blender. Ugh. The production values on this show are just incredible. <laughs> How much you want to bet I spray myself? Anyway, give it a whirl, a swirl, a, I don't know what you give this, but I'm just going to shut. <laughs> oh dear Lord. You really should, by the way, pro tip here, let the cheese melt before you do this part. Okay, I can roll tape and endlessly do this, but give me three seconds, I'll come back. If you don't just boil the living snot out of this, uh, it's going to be kind of chunky. I guess you can see that there. Uh, and that's fine for me, I'm not, trying to make it look exactly like grits. It is going to look a little bit like cottage cheese and that's quite all right. Now what you do want to do, I'm not sure who that was that just flew by me, you definitely want to taste this quite often and season it. Cauliflower is funky. It, oh actually I did pretty good. <laughs> that's a, that's a pretty good base and I think it is yeah, by the time he sets up, I'm turning his heat off. By the time he sets up, he's gonna be fine. Now what I've got going over here ah, is a pan that's gonna get overheated. What I want to do is, oh dear Lord, where did I put it? I need butter. What? Son of a gun, stay. Oh, and by the way, the shrimp are just in here staying warm and it's all completely closed off. What you wanna do is make a roux, which means you throw a bunch of butter in, and you get a bunch of flour and you turn that down because you don't want to burn this. And I've still got the uh, prosciutto juice in there. A roux is just flour and butter. That's all it is. The longer you cook it, the browner it gets. Keep, keep stirring it. Don't put in too much flour because then it will just, everything will taste like flour. And that's not what you want. We definitely want a little more heat. So it's, I don't know the, Go look it up. I don't know the percentage of this to this. I eyeball it. But you want it to be slightly thick. This is going to give it some color, and it's also going to what gives it the thickness. Some people who use cornstarch or other things, I like a roux. Now, if you're going to make a gumbo or something like that, you just want to get this as brown as black coffee. But for me, I'm actually going to put coffee in there so it doesn't have to be that brown. Let's see if I can do this without you laughing at me. So you add in, by the way, you want to add it in a little at a time, unless you really love stirring out lumps. I don't really like stirring out lumps. La la la, la. oh man, the wind's coming from the other direction now. Oh joy. 
Okay, so stirring, stirring. It looks like it's enough. It shouldn't look thick. It, it should look like, well, thick butter. And see how I've already got lumps in this thing because I have absolutely no patience, but fortunately I'll stir the hell out of it later. Okay, is that even on? Nope, hang on. Either I ran out of fuel or the wind blew me out. Oh, wind blew me out. Okay, that's the problem. I gotta cook everything on high heat here in Miami. It's gonna require a beer. Okay, so you got the roux a going. Roux, 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 roux. You're gonna wanna flavor that one. A little salt, a little pepper, and unlike the blatant lie I told earlier, this is when I'm gonna throw in a little thyme. Or, oh, whoa, let's do it the easy way. Okay, we're gonna get that a going. We're gonna put in stock. You can use seafood stock. I just happen to have unsalted vegetable stock. Don't get broth. Hey, how are you? That would be the neighbors. Broth is evil. Broth sucks. Uh, on so many levels. And the reason is stock is just made from good parts. Uh, if it was meat, it would, ooh, look at that thicken up. I got to turn that down some. The good part of this is you can just always add more frickin' ow! I no longer have hair on my knuckles. Welcome to Cooking with Rick, where the fire department will be called by the end of the show. Okay, what you're gonna wanna do, and again, you're not gonna wanna watch me do this, you're gonna stir the living snot out of this. Now there was also one other master ingredient I wanted to tell you about. I've never done this, by the way. I just heard about this. Somebody said you take some coffee and you put it in there and not only does it give it color, but it gives us this incredible flavor. I am also gonna hit this with just a smidgen of cayenne pepper, mostly because I like it and I want to surprise my girlfriend with it. <laughs> she doesn't mind heat, but surprise heat is always fun. You know, it's close enough. In a perfect world, what you would have done, and I'm going to stop this because I don't feel like filming that anymore. In a perfect world, you would have put the flour in so much slower and stirred it so much more. And then you would have had, I don't know if you can see this, you wouldn't have had all the lumps. Taste, 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 taste. That is missing a lot. Um, it definitely is missing a lot of salt. There is no flavor in that at all. I'm gonna add in a little more coffee. I'm gonna wipe my damn forehead because I'm sweating in Miami. Uh, this is the fun part. You're going to try to get this just right. It is missing something I don't, oh, you know what? I'm gonna squeeze some lemons in here. That's gonna give it a little bit, I should have kept the seeds out, a little bit of an acidic bite. And sometimes that's all you need to offset because you don't know, I don't know what the taste is. I don't know what it's missing and you keep adding stuff. And what it really just needs was a different pH balance. So let's get him a swirling and a cooking. It's got the right color at least. I'm happy about that. Let's see what, ooh, and it's really thin too. Better, weird, but better. Mm. I did something not quite right in here, but hey, we'll try it. All right, so there, you got that. I'm gonna let him sit and give me a second and we'll put this all together on a plate. Okay, I'm gonna be brutally honest with you. I put too much salt in that. It is, it should have put the lemon in first. Instead, I tried to fix it with salt. I should have fixed it with the lemon. It's, can't add any extra salt. It's a little overpowering. Anyway, here's how you put this all together. You get your mashed with not grits, which are, you can see it looks like cottage cheese. It's about the consistency of cottage cheese. Not bad. You want to get a shrimp. Uh, let's get a pretty one. Where's a pretty shrimp? Here's some pretty shrimp. You can 
stack them around. I don't know. Wow, look at that. I'm being very anal. Uh, la 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 la. Let's make that tail face a different way. We'll put him over there. And we'll put one. I gotta put one in my mouth. Mm. Ooh, that turned out pretty good. So you got your shrimp. Oh, oh my God. Shrimp is excellent. Got a little bit of a, my nasty gravy. Just gonna kind of drizzle that all around. All right, now that doesn't look very pretty right now. I realize that it looks like, well, I'm not gonna tell you what it looks like. However, what we're gonna do is take some of that yummy prosciutto, break it up, and he kind of goes around. Oh man, this makes you wanna lick your damn fingers, hang on. <laughs> mm. But we're not done yet. Also got scallions, green peppers, whatever you wanna call them. Sprinkle some of them around and a touch of cilantro. And there you go, Rick's a shrimp and a grits. Without grits. Also, I'm going to get my Sauvignon Blanc that I have never had before. Would you guys like to smell the cap? It looks right. Here, I'm gonna come over here where you can kind of see me. It is <laughs> gonna go so wrong. It looks like shrimp. <coughs> Cayenne pepper just got in my throat. It looks like shrimp and grits. I'm gonna try a little bit of the cauliflower. Actually, um, even though it's really, really salty, I mean, really, really salty, that's not too bad. Use my fingers. Oh man, I may not have done the gravy right, but that shrimp is really freaking good. In fact, you're gonna to listen to me eat another one. Mm. Hmm. So, no, this is not authentic low country cooking. Ooh, it's got some heat though. Yeah, it kind of makes you forget about the salt. Anyway, no, it is not authentic low country cooking, but it is fun. That was something else I was gonna try. A friend of mine, she's a chef. <coughs> Excuse me, still got the cayenne pepper in my throat. A friend of mine's a chef. Uh, her and her husband do yachts. They take people's yachts all around and she cooks for them. Anyway, she posted up something on Facebook the other day called breadfruit. Now breadfruit is supposed to be this potato-like fruit that's kind of sweet, kind of not. I'm dying to try that instead of cauliflower to see if it can sort of substitute. Anyway, I think it's a little healthier. It's got less grits, got a lot of butter. We try to get rid of some of the dairy, but there you go. Be a pirate. Mm, that was a really good one, sorry, I digress. Be a pirate, <laughs> go wander, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>